Anton Gog was a talented artist from Bohemia, who settled in New Ulm around 1879. Always struggling to make a living, Gog tried his hand as a photographer for several years, and with friends began a decorating business, painting the interiors of homes, churches, and civic buildings such as Turner Hall. When the opportunity came up, he also accepted financial support and commissions from wealthy patrons. In New Ulm, during the closing years of the 19th century, the Eagle Flour Mill was the largest industry. So it is not surprising that Anton Gog would paint one of his finest scenes on a flour barrel head. I, I think it's really interesting that uh, Anton Gog went to New Ulm in 1879, and one of the reasons might have been that he was not able to make a living as an artist in St. Paul, but there were great opportunities in growing towns for artists, and so he went there in 1879. He became a protege of August Schell. We believe that he worked in the Shell Brewery temporarily, but uh, he was a very uh, charming and intelligent and personable young man. And uh, from what I've read and learned, the German Bohemians were not in the uh, upper echelons of New Ulm society, but Anton Gog had a personality, and he was very talented in music as well as art, and so he attracted attention and made uh, very influential friends. So August Schell and other businessmen got together to send Anton Gog to art school in 1880, and he went first to Chicago. And it's important to our uh, the story, I think, because um, he was there at a time when the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts had just opened, and it was run along very traditional lines with uh, the most uh, valuable kind of painting seen to be um, history painting, and then a heroic landscape, and then portraits of important people. He did not enroll in that school. Unfortunately, records do not record that he attended there, but he would have uh, taken lessons from a professor there, someone who at least was in tune with this uh, way of thinking about art, a very traditional uh, approach to um, history painting. And he sent back some paintings to New Ulm, four paintings to his patrons that showed that he was learning the classical manner. And then later that year, he went to Milwaukee. And this is important too because there were a lot of history painters and panorama painters in Milwaukee. And it was really the stronghold of German American artists. And it was known as the Athens of the Midwest because of all of these German. German um, artists. During the Battle of New Ulm, both the Eagle and the Globe mills were burned. So on the 40th anniversary of the battle, uh, Charles Silverson at the Eagle Mill commissioned Anton Gog to do a painting on a flower barrel, and it's later referred to as a plaque. So I'm assuming that flower barrel head paintings were a kind of format. And so this was painted at the behest of Silverson. It's similar to the, uh, this attack on Yuan painting, but we have to bear in mind that the format is very different. So this is on a small flower barrel. It's the same event, but it's seen from the defender's point of view. And now we have uh, the defenders in the foreground behind this makeshift barricade that looks like just all kinds of lumber and whatever's available piled up in the grand tradition of barricades. And you see the Indians approaching on horseback. So it's uh, quite a different point of view. I don't think it has the um, grandeur and the heroism, and of course the format doesn't call for that. It's really showing, it's really showing a more um, homely uh, view of the battle. I think what comes across in this particular painting is the um, 
makeshift uh, defense of New Ulm, that these were not professional soldiers. They were reinforced by General Sibley's forces in on the 20th. So, uh, but this is supposed to be the first day of the battle, and it was just the citizens of New Ulm trying to defend themselves with whatever weapons they had at hand.